that to know him was to love him and to love him was to know him hello we have some very very interesting facts this week about star trek next generation episode six the schizoid man in this episode it features the enterprise coming across the scientist ira graves and his aide now while with graves he seemingly dies but somehow transfers himself into Data's body. The producers decided it would be a great idea to hire a real schizoid man as a consultant, but Rick Berman hadn't done his due diligence. Royston Bunsuel was released from Los Angeles County Medical Center for the Insane on day release, signed off by Rick Berman himself. Rick was asked if they needed Royston's usual carers, but Rick needed authenticity, so demanded no carers or medicine at all. What ensued was a true portrayal of lunacy and miscommunication in the studio. Look at that face. The face of a thinker. A warrior. In 1988, the self-care routine of the Hollywood elite was the cheese bath a trend initiated by Hollywood stars. Hot caramelized onion cheese would be poured into pools for the rich to soak themselves in for the afternoon in a misguided attempt at a highbrow skincare routine. Not only did the gunk congeal quickly and become hard to wipe off, it left the user with an interesting yet sickly scent that would linger for days. That's where Lever Burton comes in. With a newfound fame and money in his pocket, he frequented the cheese baths with other celebrities like Bill Murray and Whitney Houston. During the filming of The Schizoid Man, Lever Burton would possibly tell his co-stars that he'd never felt so fresh since he'd been getting the cheese baths and yet he gave off a scent that no one would have any tolerance for. After filming the episode, Gene Roddenberry had to tell Lever that if he wanted to continue his Starfleet career, he'd need to find a new skincare routine that didn't involve the cheese bath. It was during the production of The Schizoid Man that Rick Berman halted everyone and called a desperate meeting. He gathered everyone together and explained that he was fed up with everyone being busy all day, apart from the actors who just sit around for most of the day doing nothing while everybody else worked. An actor spends countless hours on the stage because only a few minutes of their day is spent actually acting. Most of it is spent sitting. Rick asked that the actors keep themselves busy by each having a specialist task. For example, Marina Sirtis would allegedly bring Rick coffee, Michael Dawn would check people's IDs at the door, and Will Wheaton would be a toilet monitor, reporting back to Rick when a certain person would make a mess. This didn't last for long, as the actors would soon join the Actors' Screen Guild to escape these chores. Perhaps his greatest flaw was that he was too selfless. He cared too much. In the opening scene of the episode, we see Data experimenting with his look. He calls LaForge and Troy to his room, where he shows them that he now has an experimental beard. You're probably wondering where this idea came from. While writing the episode, Writer Hans Beamler was inspired by the hunky big boy look that Riker had achieved. If you look closely, you'll notice that Riker now has a beard, unlike his character in season one. When season one came to an end, Riker actress Jonathan Frakes had come to understand that everybody looked to him for inspiration, like the father figure of the team. In a hope that he could inspire change amongst his colleagues, he decided to grow a beard, an inspiration that writer Hans Beamler took comfort in and made it come to life for the Data Robot in the episode The Schizoid Man. During the production of the episode, the feud between Star Trek and its science fiction rival was really heating up. At the American Science Fiction Awards 1988, 
the award for best robot of the year was hotly contested, with the Star Trek robot Data representing Star Trek, and Johnny Five from Short Circuit 2 representing Short Circuit 2. Both of these popular robots made it as finalists, but both lost out to the eventual winner, Crichton from Red Dwarf. Whereas Star Trek bowed out gracefully, producers from Short Circuit 2 threw their drinks to the ground and claimed that the awards were an absolute scam. They rasped that the hydraulics on Johnny Five's special arms were more interesting alone than Data and Crichton together. It's this showing of sore loserness that would cause the war between Star Trek and Short Circuit 2 to heat up in the near future. The actress who plays Karine Bryannon was warmly welcomed to the set, but the crew were in for a surprise. She possibly suffered from hyperthyroidism, which meant that she needed to have the heat turned on as much as possible. Her agents had written into her contract that the studio must be at least 98 degrees at all times, so hundreds of heaters were plugged in and no one was allowed to open a window or turn on any air conditioning. The actors had a gruelling few days, all profusely sweating, needing to be toweled down between takes every 30 seconds or so. Some of the crew couldn't take the heat and called in sick, and data actor Spiner even fainted at one point, getting white makeup smeared on the Enterprise wall. The day that the actress left the set forever, all of the heaters were thrown in the bin, the windows were thrown wide open, as if it would make a difference for the last few days. Of course it didn't. Rick Berman didn't seem to understand anything. Actor William Morgan Shepard appears in this episode as Ira Graves. You might recognise him from being that Klingon guard in Star Trek VI and from being a weirdo in Star Trek Voyager episode Bliss. What you obviously don't understand though is that he actually auditioned for the part of Jadzia Dax in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Of all his Star Trek roles though, this role in the schizoid man was his favourite in his own words, he got to play one of Star Trek's most cherished and pulverised characters. Did you notice while watching this episode of Star Trek The Next Generation that Captain Picard is barely in the episode at all? Legend has it that a shunned actress, Gates McSomething, invited Patrick Stewart for lunch on the day of the production, and instead of taking him back to the studio after lunch, she took him to a garden centre to look at the ornamental fountains and the nice small trees, as she knew that he had a love for gardening and maintaining a neat garden in his home of Mulhattan in England. By distracting him and delaying production, she possibly thought that she was gaining a small level of revenge on the show that had got rid of her, but luckily the production went ahead without Picard, as other Enterprise crew filled in for his dialogue lumps. The next day at Paramount Studio 9 during filming, the dialogue had been changed to get a measure of revenge back at muck something. In the scene where Dr. Pulaski barks that she's come to the rescue, the crew member replies that the Enterprise has a good doctor at last. With all of this nonsense going on, it's hard to believe that anything got made back in the 1980s in Star Trek. Popular actor Madonna, who was dating Worf actor at the time, was in the studio and stood at the side of the stage as the scenes were filmed using cameras and stuff. Cheering on Worf, clapping with glee while he was acting. Several times during the day, filming had to be halted and Madonna was told to stop clapping as it was being picked up by the microphones that were recording the audio of the episode. Reportedly, a lot of the assistants asked to have Madonna removed as she was too much of a distraction but Rick Berman barely heard what they were saying, as he couldn't take his eyes off of Madonna. He was probably wondering if she had those pointy metal boobs on under her summer dress, or something equally gratuitous. Thanks for listening to my 
very interesting facts about Star Trek Next Generation Season 2, Episode 6. Please go ahead and subscribe. I'm not going to persuade you not to. I appreciate it very much. Hit a like if you want to and make a comment if you want to. That's all very nice. Uh, come back next time. Hopefully I'll have another episode full of facts for you about an episode which is factual. So thanks very much and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!